Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guests here today, well, first of all, I just want to let everyone know that we are talking to a New Yorker from the Jersey Shore-ish area. So, you know, everyone, you know, be prepared. You know, we're going to talk about Guidos a little bit because they're one of my favorite types of human beings of all time, just because I'm a huge Jersey Shore fan. But before we get into all that, we have Nicole Sullivan on the podcast. She is coming to us from Jersey, like I said. She's a, you know, a health and fitness, basically... I don't know. She's like a jack of all trades, really. I mean, she's competed. She's a mom, which I mean, any of the moms that I have on this podcast that are still able to compete, I mean, it's more power to you where it's like, I do not have that type of motivation, especially with having a kid because that's that's just a full-time job in and of itself. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, I got to ask first of all, because I asked this to every single guest, what is the weather like in New Jersey today? Um, It is... Actually, a little bit windy, but still pretty nice, like 80 degrees. See, it's like 95 here, which is weird, because this is like the one time that I'm going to talk to someone from New York, and they actually have, you know, better weather than we have here, it, unless it's the wintertime, because in the wintertime, it's like negative 30 degrees here, and I mean, you guys don't you guys don't really get that on the East Coast, but mm. yeah, I mean, hey, I, I really can't complain. I mean, this is the type of weather where, where I got to wait for it to get dark out before I go out, you know, go on my walks, but you know, hey, it's the price you got to pay during the summertime, but before we depress everyone who's living in, you know, cooler weather and they'll be like all oh, those poor people that are talking right now why don't you first off give us your backstory and what really inspired and motivated you to get in shape and how that led to you eventually becoming a bodybuilder um so honestly like i've been you know going to the gym working out for a few years now maybe like seriously maybe i don't know five or six years um but I more so started it, not even for the physical aspect of it. It was always mental for me. So um, I come from like a really dark past. Um, I basically fell in love with just getting in the gym and being able to shut everything off and use that as like my therapy. So that was what made me fall in love with it to begin with. And, um, you know, with consistency, as I started to notice my body change, I started to actually like my reflection in the mirror and it was really cool to see myself change and as I was able to learn things you know do things the correct way I remember first walking in the gym it was like so scary you know you don't know what you're doing and you're embarrassed and everything else and you know I just started asking people how to do things and once I you know learned and and like I said started seeing changes uh then I had my daughter and that was like a huge setback for me um I ended up having really bad postpartum depression and I kind of lost myself for a while. Um, I think it was like six months after I had her, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I was extremely sick uh, in the hospital. I lost like an insane amount of weight really fast from being sick. Uh, I was just, it was terrible. Um, so at that point I realized like I lost myself and I needed to figure out what I had to do to, you know, get better and, and find myself again. I wasn't, I didn't want to just be a mom, you know, I didn't want to lose who I was. So, um, essentially I started slowly going back to the gym and working out and sure enough, you know, I found myself again and I started to be happy and, you know, remember that, yes, I can still be a mom and take care of myself. You know, it was hard for me at first, like a lot of new moms, I feel like you, it's a huge change. You know, you have this life you have to take care of and you forget to take care of yourself. And when it comes down to it, that's the most important thing is taking care of yourself before you can even take care of anybody else. So I, you know, I went back, I started working out, I started seeing changes and people just started saying to me like, Oh, you should, you know, you should really do bodybuilding competitions. And I'm not going to lie. I was like, such a hater I didn't like it I thought it was so stupid I never wanted to look like that I thought they all looked crazy and I was like no I don't want to do that I was like I don't want to look like that I don't want to like do any of those drugs like you know I was just so against it and I don't know one day like the more I heard it and the more I looked into it I was like you know what I love working out I love doing this and like as far as the diet part of it I already at that point was so used to having a restricted diet because of Crohn's disease, like I can only eat certain things. So I was already like so strict with my diet. So I said, you know what, let me just try it. Like, you know, if I don't like it, whatever, but I could try. And I did my research. 
I looked into like all these different coaches. Um, and then, you know, I found my coach and I just, I started just basically doing exactly what he told me to do. I never, I didn't know what I was doing. I was completely lost. And this was only 2019. I started with him the end of 2019. Yeah. December, 2019. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I just basically asked a lot of questions and just followed what he said. Never in a million years thought I was going to be good at it or that I'd get anywhere. Um, and it was just crazy. You know, I did my first show. Um, well, my prep was through the pandemic. First of all, I did it all in my garage and it wasn't until the very end. So I had like four different shows get canceled. And I just didn't want to give up. I refused. I was like, there's no way. Like, I worked so hard. I'm just going to keep going until, like, a show happens. So I think, like, the last five or six weeks of my prep, um, I was able to start training in a gym secretly. And uh, like I said, I mean, I was in prep for, like, nine months. It was insane. It was not healthy <laughs> by any shape, by any means. But I was just determined um well that's one thing about me when I want something I just won't give up I'm very very driven in that way so uh I did my first show Tampa Pro in August 2020 and I won that show got nationally qualified and then am I saying too much here no I'm keep going. going trust me all right I'm just rolling. I'm like, oh my god! Just... Oh my god! Okay, so first of all, everyone who's who's been a long time listening to the podcast, you know that my record for the longest. So after I asked that first question, the longest response ever was 28 minutes, and that was like the best. That was the shining light of my entire podcast. Where I was like, oh my god, I didn't have to do anything. No, talk as much as you want. The less I have to talk, people. Like I told you before we start recording this, people are probably sick of hearing my voice on this thing. So any any distraction is probably better. So yeah, take as much time as you want. Okay. All right. So yeah, I, I won that show, which was crazy. I was not expecting that at all. There was a lot of amazing girls up there. Um, and then I started nursing school. Well, my reverse after that, let's just, let's back up for a second. I did not ver reverse correctly after that show. You know, it was my first show. Um, I just wasn't smart with it. And, you know, looking back, I wish I would have done it differently, but you learn, you know, you learn and you grow and whatever. So I went into nursing school and life just got crazy. Very, very hard. I continued to train. Um, and then all of a sudden my coach texted me and he was like, let's do universe. And I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, there's no way. I was like, first of all, I'm not going to prep while I'm in school. Like, this is crazy hard. I'm crying every day. Nursing school, you want me to prep too? Like, and you know, he's just extremely encouraging and, he believed in me and he just said, like, I know you can win it. And I, and I think we should give it a shot, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, whatever, let's do it. I love a challenge. So let's do it. So it was extremely, extremely hard going through school and prepping. And I finished that semester when I was like seven weeks out, I want to say. And once I finished the semester, it was just like game on, you know, not like I wasn't before, but it was just my head was in it like you know what I'm saying it was hard while I was in school and then once I finished that semester it was just like all right you know let's slam on the gas and I try you know I stayed very humble throughout the whole prep it flew by this time I guess because my last one was so fast I mean so long and a lot of people just kept coming out to me and they're like you're getting your pro card and I was like thank you like I appreciate that but I'm not gonna say that like I'm not the type of person, don't get me wrong, I'm very confident when I need to be, but I don't like to say, like, too much and get my hopes up and then be let down. So instead, I kept telling myself, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm proud of myself. I know I'm bringing a better package than last time. Stepping on that stage itself is a win for me. And, um, you know, of course, I wanted a pro card. Everybody does. But it was also only my second show. So I was like, I have no idea. I've never been to a national show. I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't know who's going to be there. I just know I'm going to bring my best and work my ass up every day. And that's what I did. And uh, I don't know. So I got to Universe. And I remember I just felt like so like I don't I can't even describe the feeling like it just felt so good I felt so proud 
Uh, I know my coach was proud of me. And like I said, I wasn't expecting, I knew I was going to do good. Don't get me wrong. I knew I, I knew the work I put in, but when I won that pro card, I was like, holy sh like how? And then I almost felt bad because there's these girls that are like, they're going after this for years and so many shows. And I did two shows and got my pro card. Like it's insane. Um, I don't know. I just know that I definitely, you know, gave my all and just did everything I could. And it just proves that, you know, hard work pays off. Like there wasn't one day that I didn't check off every single box. Um, that just, and again, yeah, this is just a sport that just requires, you know, constant hard work. Well, I'll give you an analogy real quick, just to let you know how great it is whenever I have a guest that talks a lot for me. That's like you being a nurse. If you had a doctor as one of your patients where like they knew everything that like you had to do in your job where you could literally just like sit back and relax. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like the best thing ever, but two things, first of all. So I firstly, I didn't even know. So I asked her everyone before we started the podcast, where she was from. Cause I didn't know it was Jersey because she, whenever I do my intros for anyone who's interested, I do, you know, like 95% of the talking. So I don't really tell like an accent or whatever. The moment she started talking after I asked her the first question, I was like, oh yeah, that's Jersey right there. I, I, I got, I got clips of the Jersey, which for, I only say that because for me, I have a really pronounced Minnesotan accent. So everyone that I talk to really knows, oh, you're from the upper Midwest, usually like Wisconsin or Minnesota. So I, I get that as well. And then secondly, when you said you had Crohn's disease, this, this is a story that I told like a year ago, but it's a funny story from my childhood. So I was like eight years old. And I was told from like a classmate that like one of our other classmates had Crohn's disease. I thought that they said Crohn's disease. So I thought they were like autistic or something, or they had like something wrong with them. So I went up and I talked to them and I became like friends with them. And after a while I went up to the other friend and I was like, they must be like highly functioning or something like that. And then they're like, what do you mean? And I was like, Oh, they're autistic. Are they? And he's like, Oh no, it's Crohn's disease, not Crohn's disease or something like that. So I was like, Oh, okay. So that's, that's how I got my first intro into Crohn's disease when I was a, or Crohn's disease when I was a, I was a kid, so a little fun tidbit there. But one thing interesting about you, I mean, like you said, I mean, you're a mom, you're a nurse. How do you find the time in your day to get your working out done? Because I have friends of mine who went to nursing school, and, you know, if I ever told them once that, like, hey, let's go work out, I would basically just get shoved out of the door and, you know, probably just, like, kicked in the kicked in the back as they were kicking me out. Yeah, so it's crazy because, like, I have so many, I know so many people that will say like, oh, I don't have time or I don't know how you do it and this, this and that. And honestly, like for me, as I said before, working out is what I do for my mental health. Forget about the muscles. It's my mental health. And like, so I'm in recovery. Um, and that's another piece of this puzzle. And I, for me, like, that's my high. Like, you know what I mean? That's, I don't have like, oh, I'm so stressed out. Let me pour a glass of wine. Let me do this. Let me do that it's the gym for me. So it's a priority. There's no questions. There's no like thinking about it. There's no, Oh, I got to make time. Like it's just part of my everyday routine. And no matter what, it just gets done. Like, you know what I'm saying? I either wake up earlier or go to bed later. Um, I don't even know how to explain it because it's just automatically part of my day. Like I, you know, I just wake up, get to the gym or whatever. At some point of the day, I make sure I get there. And it's not a question. It's just a priority. You know, it's just, well, and how has this mental journey been like for you? Because I, I love that you brought that up because I bring it up too. If no one else does is that, you know, this is so much more of a mental lifestyle than a physical and people do not understand that. And I think it's just because, you know, just because we're visual creatures, we'll see like the changes and someone be like, Oh wow, you look amazing from, you know, all the working out. They notice the physical changes, but they don't notice the mental changes, which are a hundred times more important. And they have a, you know, a hundred times more of a lasting impact on the individual. What has this whole journey been like for you mentally? Because like you said, you know, you do this for the mental aspect, which is one reason that I love when guests talk about that is because for me that's the right reason to do it because yeah if you i've had guests on don't get me wrong they do it just for the physical and they do fine in it but it's like doing it for the mental i think is so much more important just because that is you know having that mindset after a workout of just having that you know serotonin just that positivity that comes with it i mean it, it's life-changing absolutely um you know just mentally like so just going off of my experience and like my background um it's hard to say like for anybody, but for me, I grew up in like a really rough childhood. Um, I didn't have the best upbringing and a lot of trauma. And then in my teenage years, I, you know, I was a drug addict. I was basically like living in my car, living in crack houses, whatever, like just not good. And once I got clean and I fell in love with the gym and I started my family and everything, it was like, 
what do I need to do for Nicole? And like I said before, for me, going into the gym, you know, putting my headphones on and just getting lost in the weights and the cardio, whatever it is, something about it just makes you feel so good. Um, you know, I'm in pain sometimes with Crohn's, like whatever the case may be, I'm sad, whatever, like working out, I always finish a workout and just feel good. I, I wish more people did it and didn't look at it as such a chore and more so like medicine, you know? Um, I've just grown so much mentally in this process. I love myself more. Um, you know, not like, like we said before, not, don't get me wrong. I look in the mirror and I'm proud of myself and I love what I've done to my body, but mentally I, I'm like so much kinder to myself. I'm a better person to the people I love. It's just a very disciplined regimen sport that just helps you to grow in so many, so many areas. It's, um, it's just been a blessing to go through this process. And that's awesome. A question that I, you know, I haven't asked, you know, probably more than once. I think I asked it to someone else. I also have an addictive personality myself. I'm not, I've always, you know, told people, thank God that, you know, they don't make a Mountain Dew that tastes like alcohol because otherwise, you know, I would be, you know, a full-blown alcoholic. But like, I, I hate the taste of, I hate the taste of, I don't hate, you know, I'll drink a beer, but like, I don't have an addictive personality with that. Uh, gambling. I was like, thank God I don't have enough money to be a gambling addict. That's another thing. And then, you know, just other things like that, where it's like, I'm in a perfect situation right now where it's like, I have no reason to be addicted to, but I know I have that personality. And so when I started working out in college, I took it way to the extreme, not with like, just with like working out way too much, like the average gym bro who goes in there and is like, Oh, I'm going to train arms for like two hours. And then I'm going to train back for like two hours the next day. And then I do, I did all this cardio. Like I train, I literally right out the gate trained like a full blown bodybuilder basically. And so like, you're, yeah, your body's not ready for that. So how do you sort of like to curb that, uh, or make sure that you don't develop that addiction to, you know, the gym, like so many people that I've talked to sometimes struggle with because I mean, yeah, that feeling that you get is so great. And some people I know do struggle with that where then they overtrain and then they just burn themselves out. Um, don't get me wrong. I fall into like those black holes where I catch myself and I realize, wow, like I need to relax, you know, like I could get, I could stay at the gym for hours. Um, and I can realize that I'm like, like when I'm in prep, it's a different story. You kind of have to have that obsessive person. Like, you know, you got to be obsessed with it. You got to put it first, but I'll catch myself for sure. Or my husband will, you know, bring it to my attention. And it's weird because your mind will like fight with you and you'll be like, wait, but this is a good thing. Like, it's okay that I'm addicted to this. But at the same time, it can be unhealthy to a point where you have other priorities. You know, you have other things you could be doing with your time. It doesn't have to be so time consuming. Like you don't have to go work out for four hours. You can go work out for an hour, hour and a half, you know? And I think the main thing for me is just knowing that I have my daughter, I have my husband, I have school, whatever it may be. I have these other priorities. So like keeping that in the back of my head helps me kind of get out of that hole. Whereas if I didn't have those other responsibilities, for sure, I'd I'd be crazy. I'd be nonstop working out. Oh, for me, I mean, one of the most angry moments I've ever had in my entire life was when I would spend like my three hours working out in college. And then finally, one person came up to me and they showed me that I could do that same amount of work in 45 minutes. I was so upset. I was like, I wasted my, all my, <laughs> I wasted all this time doing all this workout for when I could have just been doing. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people. And in... honestly, usually like the short workouts end up being the best workouts because you know, you go through it quicker, you get a better pump, everything. Like the ones that you drag out and you're there forever aren't even that great. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I love to talk genetics on this podcast too, because everyone's on social media. And I mean, let's be honest. I hear this all the time. People, oh my God, I want his arms. I want her abs. I want their back. And I just want to shake them down. Just be like, you do not understand that, you know, just because you train like, just like that person, you are not going to see the same results. Everyone's built differently. But whenever someone first gets started working out, I mean, everyone always has that one body part that really, really takes off that they don't have to train as much. And then they also have that one body part that just legs behind. They have to train to oblivion to get to catch up. I mean, for me, my back was the one thing that really, really took off just because I had jobs all throughout college of lifting and loading boxes into trailers. And, you know, you got a really nice back. You quit. But I'm also 6'3". So my legs and my lower body are just absolutely shot where I could train, you know, legs 
every single day and you know they they wouldn't gain an ounce and don't even get me started on calves that's the number one genetic thing where i mean i hate it more than life itself where it's like oh anytime i see someone with nice calves in the gym it's like okay i know that you've never trained them because that's like one of the most genetic things ever but what were those body parts for you when you were getting started um so it's funny because i thought i had good legs um i was a dancer for a long time uh as a kid and then also like the bad guy and I thought I had good legs. I really did. But it wasn't until I learned, you know, more more about bodybuilding and started posing and everything that I realized that my legs were actually my weakest point. And um, I do know that I have like a, like a broad upper body and everything, but I guess it wasn't until I started, it depends on how you train and what you train that the stuff comes out. And then I realized, wow, like, you know, my shoulders and back are definitely my strongest point. Um, abs, it's crazy because as shredded as my abs get, when I'm in off season, like the second I put weight on because of my Crohn's disease, my stomach gets so bloated and I have zero abs. So it's crazy how like, and like you said, social media is a crazy thing because it's almost like I have this pressure on me, especially now that I'm a pro is like people expect me to have abs all the time or think that I have abs all the time. That's not the case. Like, those abs are there when I'm at zero carbs and two hours of cardio a day. You know what I mean? Like they are not like that. Um, and I actually, most of the time of my life, I'm very, very bloated. Um, that's just, you know, what I deal with, but it's one of the things that the second I, I'm in a calorie deficit, my abs just shred up, um, my back, my shoulders, and I struggle the most with my legs. And like you said, genetics is, that's just what it is. I have to work the hardest for my legs. Which is why I was jealous before I had her on because I was like, she's a mom and she has abs like that. It's like, good God. But I, <laughs> I feel a little bit better now that she says she gets blown a little bit. I mean, I shouldn't oh. feel good about it, but let's, let's be honest. I do. I do feel good about it. I was like, okay, thank God. She has a weakness. That, uh, she's, a, she's human after all. So yeah, even, <laughs> even looking at that, but I mean, nutrition is, you know, obviously one of the most, if not the most important things when it comes to this lifestyle. I mean, it's 80 to 90% of the results that you're going to see. What were some of the bigger nutritional changes that you made when you started to take things seriously? So it was a learning process for me. Um, you know, before I had a coach and before I was doing body, like into bodybuilding, I never looked at labels on stuff, nor did I understand any of it ever. Like I didn't understand anything on a nutrition label condiments, artificial sweeteners, any of that stuff I didn't understand. Even when I was first diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I knew like there were certain things I couldn't eat, like vegetables, seeds, skin, stuff like that. But I didn't realize all this little stuff makes such a difference. And as I said before, I I suffer heavily with bloat and, you know, gas and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't realize if I cut out these little things, the difference that it would make. And that's why when I'm in prep, I get so shredded because I'm eating such a clean, simple diet. The second I start eating any kind of seasonings, condiments, anything like that, my stomach gets inflamed. So like for me, I learned a lot, you know, simple things like carbs, like how much carbs are in things, or like I said, artificial sweeteners, sucralose, high fructose syrup, all that stuff. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that it would affect me. And now I'm so much more aware of all of that to the point where like my husband gets annoyed because like I go to eat something and I look at the label and I'm like, oh my God, that's a waste of calories. There's like 180 calories and I'm not eating that. Or wow, look at all the carbs that's in that. And now like when I'm at the store, I'll go for the condiments that are, you know, 10 calories, 15 calories rather than you know, this one might taste better, but that's a whopping 200 calories in one tablespoon, like that kind of stuff. And I'll look to see, you know, what, what's in it. You're, you, you're putting this stuff in your body. You don't realize it when you're not educated about it. You don't realize what you're putting in your body, you know, and it really makes all the difference. Even like, I know a lot of people that like live off soda and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, they're so upset. They're not losing weight. They think they're on this diet and they're doing so great. And it's like little stuff like that makes a difference, you know, stop drinking the soda, stop putting the 200 calorie barbecue sauce all over your stuff. Like all that stuff adds up. And I've learned that. And it's so cool and amazing to be aware of it. But at the same time, like we talked about before, like the addiction, all that, it's like, to the point where like, now I'm so aware of it that I annoy myself. Like, I'm like, Oh, I wish I could just not care, but it's crazy. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the nutrition, I mean, it's, 
Yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole that I that I don't like to dive under in this podcast because we can be talking here for 10 hours and still not even finish oh, yeah. up with the nutrition. It is just absolutely ridiculous. But the hardest thing that I would have never guessed in a million years before I started this podcast that I knew about, but I mean, it's like I didn't think it was that hard, was that for so many of these athletes, posing is the hardest, if not one of the hardest things that you have to do in this lifestyle. It's harder than your nutrition. It's harder than the working out. What was your experience with posing like? Um, So it's funny. I can actually send you pictures of like when I first – first started my first step my first prep and what my posing looked like it is embarrassing but really cool to see how much I've grown um so I honestly just the way I like taught myself was I would look up YouTube videos or I would go to like some of the big pros and like watch what they did look at how they did it and I like I said I asked my coach questions like I was never afraid to ask him or I would send him a video and be like hey am I doing this right or whatever um, and then honestly, practice was the hugest thing. Like I would practice like crazy. I would set an alarm on my phone and every day for like half an hour to an hour, I would go in the mirror and I would just practice. Um, and then even like towards the end, I would set like a minute timer and hold each pose for a minute. And I think honestly, that's why like a lot of girls you'll see on stage were like shaking when they're holding their poses. And that's one thing I'm proud of is I'm like rock solid. Like I don't shake. And I think holding the poses for like the time minute all those times really makes a difference um but yeah like you said posing is the hardest it's it's really hard like you're sweating cramping like it's hard and it makes all the difference you know someone can be someone can look way better but if their posing isn't good you know they're not gonna place well and it all adds up all that stuff um I think the biggest thing is just practicing and asking for help, making sure you're doing it right. Don't just assume that it's right. You know, you want to perfect it. I am a perfectionist, so I just keep working until it's right. Well, and I mean, you talked about, you know, being able to hold the poses for as long as possible. I mean, that is, yeah, that is one thing that I think people in the general public do not understand is that the human body is not meant to be in that flex of a stage for that long a period of time. How long did it take you before you think you developed that, you know, just being able to hold that pose? Because that is the one thing that, I mean, exhausts so many people. And that for a lot of people is the hardest thing about posing. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think it's like anything. I think it was just practicing it. Um, when I first started doing that with the timer for like a minute at a time, I couldn't, I could last maybe 10 seconds and I'd start cramping or like the, I would just start sweating, shaking, whatever. And it was just, the more I did that, the easier, the easier it became. And then it was like to the point where I was on stage and I was fine. Like I'm holding those poses fine. I could stand there all day. I think it's just practice. Absolutely. And when they called your name and you realized, oh my God, I have my pro card now. What was that moment like for you? Honestly, it didn't feel real for like days. I was like, so shocked. I don't even know how to describe it. Like I was shocked, but at the same time, it was like, I knew I deserved it. Not to sound cocky, but it was like, I don't know. I just knew that how hard I worked and what I put into it and the sacrifices and the pain and the tears and just, you know, I'm a firm believer in like your mindset and like positive thoughts, bring positive things and just believing um, that you can do anything as long as you set your mind to it. And I just know based off of the experience in my life, anything that I've wanted, I've gotten from like just working my off you know nothing's been given to me my entire life and it was just like I knew when I stepped on that stage I didn't want to step on the stage and in the back of my head be thinking oh man I shouldn't have slacked on cardio or I should have did this I should have did that I knew when I stepped on that stage I did everything you know like I and even knowing that even if I didn't place well at least I knew I did my best you know what I'm saying either way but when they when I got my pro card it was like I stepped off stage. I was shaking. I was like, how is this happening? Like it took me like a week for, for it to sink in. And even still, like I'm at the gym, people are congratulating me and all this stuff. I'm getting all these messages and offers from people. And it's like, who am I? Like, how did I get here? You know? And at the same time, it's a lot of pressure because social media is crazy. And it's like, you feel like you have to be, you know, you have to, I don't know how to explain it, but now that like I'm considered a you have a standing to uphold, basically. Yeah, exactly, and and it's a lot. It's hard when you have so many other things in your life, and um, 
I know I inspire a lot of people and I just try to do my best and just be honest and real. That's all you can do, you know? Well, and I mean, you brought it up and I love to talk about, you know, post-show blues because a lot of people do not understand. Yeah. That like that look that you present on stage is not a sustainable look. How have you been dealing with that? Cause that's something that so many athletes struggle with. And I'd say almost every athlete does. I've had one or two that say that they don't. And I'm like, okay, let's, because you're on my podcast, I'm not going to argue with you about it, but it's like, that's something that so many people struggle with. How have you been dealing with the whole post-show blues? Oh, absolutely. It's a real thing. And nobody warned me about that last time. Um, so my last show, I got severely depressed after it, like very, very, very depressed. Um, I will say I had like no goals afterwards. No, I had nothing planned. So it was kind of just like, I worked so hard all those months for something. And I was in such, for me and my lifestyle, like routine is huge. So like when I'm in that, like, everyday daily routine I'm on top of the world but then the second that changes and I'm like not on a routine and I don't have something I'm working towards I could I fall into depression very easily and I got extremely depressed um as I said I didn't follow a reverse diet so I blew up really fast I hated the way I looked I felt terrible I had nothing to look forward to um it was scary I, I got put on meds and everything at the time but this time around, I learned my lesson for sure. Um, I knew, like, the most important thing was up here. So, you know, I won that pro card and I was happy. But at the same time, I was like, all right, what's the plan after this? You know, like, you can't just get off the stage and now fall back into that depression. So I knew, like, you know, I scheduled some photo shoots. I you know, just had other things to look forward to, even outside of bodybuilding. And the the biggest thing for me this time around was following the reverse diet. So don't get me wrong. You get off that stage after dieting for so long, you want to eat. You do. But especially me with Crohn's disease, I, I got sick. I was throwing up for like a week straight last time. Like I knew I couldn't, my body can't handle that. So don't get me wrong. You know, that night I enjoyed myself a little bit, but then I talked with my coach, got the plan, and I just told myself, if I can prep for that long and do that, why can't I do it for just a little bit longer and do it the right way? The food's always going to be there. So every time I'm, like, struggling with the food, I just keep reminding myself, it's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. It's not about, like, blowing up and trying to hold on to the shreds and all that. It's about my health, and I know that's important to slowly increase, you know? So that's been huge. And I think that, I think following the reverse diet also helps with your mental health. Um, you know, you are what you put in your body. You're going to put all this junk in your body right away. You're not going to respond well, both physically and mentally. So that's huge. And um, like I said, just having other, other plans, other things scheduled, um, just trying to, stay positive and, and keep working out too. Like last time, I think I was so exhausted that I like stopped working out. I stopped doing cardio, everything. Cause I was just angry. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And this time I'm, I've been, you know, trying to stay consistent with it. I will say, um, everything was going extremely well. And then these past two weeks, um, just hit the fan in my life. So, um, I can feel myself starting to get you know a little bit depressed and I have to stop myself and remind myself that I can get through this you know what I mean type of thing because you can easily fall into it and surround myself with good people and um trying to keep that positive mindset is very important um because you know like I said everything can be going really well and then in the blink of an eye it can all change so Absolutely. Yeah, I saw that you were in a really bad car accident. How have you been dealing with that? Yeah, so um, that was a huge wake-up call for me. I'll be the first to admit that I go on my phone a lot when I'm driving. And, you know, you think you're invincible. You think you're fine. You can look at the road and look at your phone. And all it takes is one second. That was literally all it was, was a second. And thank God nobody else was in the car with me. Um, thank God I'm all right because you know, everybody at the scene was like shocked that I was even walking after that accident. But that car was brand new. I've had it for like a month and a half. 
So at first I was like devastated about the car. I didn't care about anything else. And um, like I said, I'm just grateful that my daughter wasn't in the car. Um, grateful that I'm okay for the most part. Um, I'm more like mentally messed up. It was really traumatizing for me. But other than that, I got a concussion and like my neck and back's a little stiff. But I'm just fighting through it. Um, that's it. I mean, my dad's in the hospital now with COVID. So that's been really stressful for me. But like I said, I'm just, you know, even doing this podcast was like perfect timing, even though all the times we tried to get together, I was like, I need this right now. So. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, I'm a therapist too, as well as a podcast host. So no, <laughs> no worries. And we, and we do wish, I mean, you and your dad all the best and hopefully, is he, is he doing better or what's he, what's he at right now? With, how long has he been in the hospital? He's doing better. Um, He was admitted two days ago and he's doing okay. He's on oxygen. They have him on a lot of meds. So uh, just hoping for the best. He's a fighter. Was he vaccinated? He wasn't, which he regrets now. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah, which is what I've heard too. And yeah, I I got my vaccines done too. So at least I'm I'm happy for that. But I mean, the one thing that so many people don't talk about, which is the most important thing, I don't care what anyone says in this left out, is sleep. For anyone that disagrees with me on that, I tell them, pull an all-nighter, then go and try to work out and tell me how that works for you. Especially being a mom and, you know, being in the nursing field. I mean, your sleep must be just so down pat. But is there anything that you like to do in order to, you know, try to get that proper amount of sleep? Because especially when you're in prep, I mean, let's be honest, you're not going to get a lot of sleep just because the body is... It's it's a it's a conundrum where it's your body is so tired that you can't sleep. It's it's just a weird thing to really explain to people. But how do you deal with the whole sleeping issue, especially being that you have you know basically three full time jobs with being a mom, a bodybuilder, and a nurse? So um, I have like a like I said before, I'm more in a routine when I'm in prep. I wish I could keep that routine when I'm out of it, but for some reason I can't. Um, but I have like a schedule where I do certain things to like help myself relax. So I'll, I love tea at night. So I'll drink like some kind of herbal tea, whether it's chamomile or I have like these stress release teas or something like that. Um, will help me relax. I'll put on like my favorite fuzzy socks. I love fuzzy socks. Um, and just kind of try to wind down, put my phone away. And, um, honestly, nine times out of 10, I'm exhausted. Like the minute my head (laughs) hits the pillow, I'm out. So I don't really struggle in that department. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is just finding something that helps you relax. And for everyone out there turning off your phones and your social media too, that's the number one thing that, that I hear about all the, oh yeah, that's huge. And I do that myself too, or, you know, especially doing running this podcast and my full-time job, my regular full-time job. Anyway, it's hard for me to turn the phone away. So I've struggled with that mightily in the past, but my number one pet peeve is cardio. I mean, I hate it more than life itself where. I mean, and when I say cardio, I mean like actual running. Like I could walk on a treadmill for forever and it doesn't bother me. But unfortunately, when you do become a bodybuilder, you sort of have to sign a deal with the devil when it comes to cardio. What is your relationship with cardio like? I hate it. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, I envy people that can run. I've never been a runner. I don't know. I just can't. I can't do it. It physically hurts me. I can't run. But um, I'm one of those people that ends up having to do two to three hours on the treadmill walking because that's the only cardio I can do. And it's just what I do. Um, but yeah, I, my cardio routine was always wake up fast with cardio, try to get like at least an hour. So that way the rest, depending on where I was at in prep, I could do either, you know, pre and post workout or just post workout. Very rarely there was those times where I slacked and ended up having to do it at night before bed, which sucks. But you know, whatever it takes. So I definitely don't enjoy it though. Even now I'm only at 50 minutes now a day and it's like, uh, it sucks. It, it's still, yeah, that still is just, just an absolute. All the difference, though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you mentioned one thing that really surprised me is that you did your whole entire first prep in a, in a garage, basically gym to get ready for your show. What was that like? Yeah. So it's funny. I actually have a treadmill in my living room and I have an echo bike in my kitchen. <laughs> Um, which I hate drives me nuts, but you know, me and my husband both were doing whatever it takes and it's just so much easier with my daughter and everything having cardio at home. But, um, the garage situation, we basically just started collecting equipment once the pandemic hit. Um, both of us need to work out for our mental health, as I said before, and I was in prep and I wasn't going to give up or quit. There was no way. 
So we just kind of started collecting stuff from friends, from Facebook Marketplace, whatever. Threw it in there and just made it work. Um, we had like really old stuff. A lot of the workouts I was doing with bands. Just like crazy. Just I was just figuring out a way every day. And um, I remember thinking like, wondering how much better I would have looked if I actually had the gym. But even still, I mean, you know, obviously I looked good enough, but it was just, it was crazy. And it was like really, re it was extra rewarding knowing that I could have been sitting on my ass and doing nothing and just, you know, being in quarantine at home, but I, I still figured out a way. So it was really cool. Well, still, here's the thing. Everyone was struggling though, too. And a lot of other people that I know were doing gym workouts for their preps. It just wasn't their first one. So yeah, it's a lot of people were really struggling with that. And I mean, if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Nicole, we made a decision. You can change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone will go along with it. What would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? Wow. That's a hard question. Um, hmm. I can give you my answers while you're thinking. Hmm. Yeah. So for me, it would be, especially with judges, just because, I've always made the comparison where like if you were to compete in shows in back to back weekends, one week they might want you a little bit more of a leaner look and then the next weekend they might want you a little bit more of a, you know, a fuller look. And it's like, well, good luck changing your body through that. Just making an overall like this is what we want just for people. Just trust me, being a baseball pitcher, I know all about horrible officiating. Don't even get me started on some of the umps that I had to deal with. But it's just like with bodybuilding, like with every sport, there there is going to be human error. But yeah, for me, it was just that if they could just clean up a little bit more and just have like a more of a precise image of, for like every show as opposed to like, oh, I know if I compete in this show, I can just get more leaner. And if I compete in that other show, you know, I'm going to need to change things up. Or that that would be mine, at least. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's a crazy thing about this sport is like you don't know what the judges are looking for, what they want, like specifically. It can be so, like you said, it can be different. Um but that's another reason why I think it's so important to just be like proud of yourself and bring your best package no matter what. And not so much, don't get me wrong. Everybody's doing it to win and that's what we all want. But I feel like you have, it has to be more about inside, you know, go up there to make yourself happy at the end of the day, you know, Oh, you can put on social media that you won first place or that you have a pro card. You know what I mean? Like it's more so you should feel like you won no matter what you place. Um, but I think, the biggest thing maybe would be like the money part of it it's it's extremely expensive um I remember like my first show when I was looking at suits it blew my mind that these suits were like over a thousand dollars for a new suit dude I rented my suit both shows same exact suit and there was no way I was spending more than five hundred dollars on a suit even that was a lot but you know just the expenses what you know to get there to pay for the show every year spending so much money and and doing so much work and then that's it like you don't win money or nothing like it's just you know obviously unless you're high up but that part I wish we could change maybe like not have so many expenses and maybe win things like whether it's sponsorships or even just like care packages or something would be so cool you know absolutely i mean people don't understand that you're losing money in this sport and even if you are one of the top bodybuilders in the world you're not making that much let's let's be completely honest and the amount of money that you have to spend you know just on nutrition and on you know supplements and stuff i mean it is ridiculous you're not gonna make so yeah if they could if they could do it where you could make money that would obviously you know obviously be one for me too, i have so. to fall in love with an expensive sport like this oh i've always <laughs> said like that's the ultimate Ponzi scheme. Like if I could have come up with a sport where the athletes have to pay me more than I pay them just to compete in it and all that stuff, you know, that guy, the, whoever invented bodybuilding, I mean, if, it, if there's like one guy that like owns all of American bodybuilding, I mean, that guy would be a very, very wealthy person. But if we were to talk to you a year from today, where'd you like to be at just in your overall bodybuilding journey? Where'd you like to be at just in your overall life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved? <sighs> um, a year from now, I hope to make it through the next two semesters of nursing school. First of all, that right now is my main priority. Um, as far as bodybuilding and everything, it's so many people are asking me like what my plan is and everything. It's really hard for me to say. Um, I'm just the type of person that literally just one day, I'm one day at a time. Like I don't like to set plans like far ahead or think about that. It just gives me anxiety. Um, I trust my coach when it comes down to it. So I kind of just check in with him and just, follow the plan year round and, and take his word. Like I said, the last universe was his decision. Um, you know, I definitely need to put on a lot of size, so I'm going to focus on building more 
And I'm not going to step on stage again for my pro debut until I know that I'm ready and that I'm bringing my best package. At this point, I'm so used to winning that I'm like scared to get on a pro stage and like be let down, you know? So I'm just going to keep working and working and um, bring my best package that I can. I don't have any specific plans. I don't even know if I'll be competing a year from now. Um, one day at a time. That's it. Hey, and that is that is a great goal to have. And lastly, notice that you're covered in tattoos. Do any of your tattoos have any significant meanings to them? Oh, God. Um, they do and they don't. Um, a lot of them have to do with, like, the struggles I went through um, when I was an addict and what I came through. Um, I don't know. I'd have it here all day. This arm has a lot to do with that. This arm um, has a lot to do with my grandmother who passed away. I don't know. I, I, it's a lot. I regret a lot of them, to be honest with you. Hey, you know, hey, you live and you <laughs> learn, basically. I've never gotten a tattoo myself, but eventually I think I will get one. It'll probably just be like an ankle thing. Like, I'll be a little, I'll be a little wuss about it. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's awesome. And again, I mean, Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? been awesome um, i would love to give a shout out to my sponsors um g code nutrition they believed in me from the start and uh i've been with them since before i even thought about bodybuilding so it's insane to see how much i've grown how much they've grown as a company and just to have them in my corner means everything to me uh it's more than a company it's a family honestly um my other sponsor coronado's clean cuisine i could never get through either of my preps without their food and their support it's been amazing. Um, not having to meal prep and having all that food is just so helpful, not to mention it's delicious. And um, basically just anybody who's been there for me, uh, friends, family, throughout all of this, um, you know, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard sport. A lot of people get neglected. It's very selfish. And the fact that I have people there for me just means the world to me. Absolutely. And again, I'll leave a link to her Instagram page down below. Buy or beware, you will get inspired to get in the gym and you'll stop eating all those cupcakes and get off the couch. But again, Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Absolutely. And again, you guys go and check her out on Instagram. And this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.